We've actually got Rob McNeese from MPS here today, and here's what he had to say about the Z9. <laughs> Hello, Rob. Thank you. Hi, Becky. Thank you Hi, so much for joining us today. No, it's an absolute pleasure. It's... Really nice to be back here in, in person, actually. Yeah, exactly. Last time we did something, it was virtual, so yeah. It was, and that was the... <laughs> it's been a while ago. D6. That's true. <laughs> that was a while ago, absolutely. So now we've got the Z9, another flagship camera. Yeah. Um, how have you found, so far, how have you found everything? The launch, the reception? It, it's been absolutely incredible. Yeah. I think it's, it's, I mean, we knew how good the camera was going to be, but I think we weren't necessarily quite prepared for the um, <laughs> the number, the, the amount of interest from photographers and from my perspective in particular, from professional photographers, yeah. um, you know, MPS members. Um, it's been overwhelming and I'm just okay. struggling to keep up with the demand for photographers that want to, you know, get the camera into their hands. Yes. Uh, really nice to be here today to give the your customers the very first experience of getting the cameras on. Yeah, it's very hands, um, yeah. it's very well organised, you know, you come in, touch the camera, all right, off you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. Um, and so in terms of the, the demands that you've been getting, are you finding that it's obviously being MPS, are you finding it's a lot of sports and wildlife photographers or wedding photographers? Is it a bit of a mixed bag? It is a mixed bag. Mm. I think it's it appeals obviously to sports, to wildlife, to news, anything where they need that high action. But this camera is everything to everyone. So, right. you know, if you're a commercial photographer, a wedding photographer, you need the speed, you need the resolution. The Z9's got it all. Mm. So it is just, you know, if you want the best, mm -hmm. this is it. So ev everyone wants it, basically. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Are you expecting a lot of DSLRs and F-mount users to switch to mirrorless now? Without a shadow of a doubt, yeah. I mean, uh, as you guys were at the photography show mm. in Birmingham a little bit earlier in the year, well, a couple of months ago, and um, I think now is the time. I think a lot of photographers have been holding off for this. Yeah. And whilst the Z6, Z7, obviously Z6 and Z7 II have been, you know, really, really popular and done well for us, I think a lot of certainly high-end photographers, high-end um, enthusiasts and professionals alike have been holding off for this. Mm. And it's not going to disappoint anyone, no. for sure. No. Um, so, yeah, this is the time to move from DSLR. You know, we're not turning our back on DSLR. We're still supporting it. Okay. Um, and that Nikon F mount has done really well for us over 60 years, yes. but, <laughs> but the true. Z mount brings a lot of new options for photographers, you know, improved quality and so on. Um, so yeah, I think I'm seeing now is the point at which photographers are, are wanting to move to Z. Interesting. Yeah. And yeah. in terms of how long have you sort of, how long did you get it for before launch yeah. roughly if you can not, tell us yeah. not a huge months. amount of time okay. not as not as long as rishi i okay. mean we we did have a prototype camera yeah. which we could do certain things with uh, but we weren't really able to use it effectively or right. get it into photographers hands and things like that but just mm -hmm. so we could sort of experience the form factor mm. uh, and things like that so i haven't had this camera for very long at all so i'm still sort of i, I say getting used to it it's very easy to get used to yeah. because if you're a dslr user or a z user you know we've really thought about the ergonomics mm. the menu design um things like that so you can get to grips with it quickly but there's so much in the menu you know that's true so i'm still kind of picking up bits as we go on from day to day mm -hmm. how different yeah. was the prototype from the final version um really not different to be to, to be quite fair it, mm. not not hugely different i mean this is now on firmware version one mm. um we're making firmware improvements all the time and, and for the end user as well as you know with z6 and z7 we'll be improving the algorithms with respect yeah. to things like autofocus fine tuning it you know it's already astounding mm -hmm. absolutely as, as you've found when you know you've had your hands on the camera um but but uh yeah it will be improving all the time amazing yeah okay so obviously the camera is amazing for fast shooters so wildlife sports photography you name it now for people like wedding photographers landscape photographers portrait photographers what would you say to them how we can sway them let's say to join the z revolution there, there are many reasons to join. I mean, obviously, a lot of those people will probably already have adopted Z7, Z7 II. But for those who haven't and are kind of sitting on, should I go mirrorless or not? I mean, there are so many advantages. I think initially, one of the things that I found was my initial objection in my mind before we launched the Z a couple of years ago was like, I don't want to be looking at an electronic viewfinder. I want mm. to be seeing a real image. But why? You are taking a digital picture. So why not be able to see the effects of that picture before you take it? Yeah. So if you want to shoot in black and white, or if you want to shoot a high key or a silhouette, mm. or you want to use one of those picture controls for a special um, uh, artistic effect, then you can see the effect before you take it. So that's, yeah. that's one of the first things. Mm. I mean, I could go on and on. But, but also, 
um, mirrorless cameras won't suffer from back or front focus. Right. So with DSLRs, things can come out of alignment over yeah. a prolonged use, which means that the camera, what the camera is, sorry, what the sensor is seeing is not the same as what the AF sensor is seeing. Yeah. So whereas with a Z camera, the focus is always being read from the image sensor itself, so it will be 100% accurate. So from a point of accuracy as well, it's an advantage. Mm -hmm. Service point of view as well, there's less things to go wrong on these. You know, there's no mechanical answer. parts. Yeah. So if you're a pro photographer, you who could easily shoot, you know, five, ten thousand 10,000 images in a day. Mm. So they're putting, you know, maybe 100, 200,000 frames through their camera in a year easily, mm. um, which you can very quickly do with this, by the way. <laughs> um, you, you know, th there's no worry about things coming out of alignment or mm. things needing recalibrating. So there are so many advantages of using mirrorless. Also with, with regards to video as well. I mean, right. as you know, the video specs on this camera are incredible. And I think the mirrorless format lends itself really nicely to that. Yeah. I mean, there's so many reasons why. I think the adoption of, of mirrorless makes sense. Yeah. In fact, yeah. I'll be honest with you. I mean, I was a D850 user, mm. and I'm sure the same for many of your yeah, customers. We were too. <laughs> Love the D850, kind of hailed as perhaps the best DSLR ever made, sure. arguably. And I really loved it, but I got to grips with a, a Z7, and I think after a day or so, I wouldn't want to go back. And I'll be honest with you, I pick up a, a DSLR now, and it seems quite archaic. I want to be seeing a, <laughs> I want to be seeing a, an electronic image. I, you know, all other things that I hadn't even mentioned were like the ability to review your images through the viewfinder as well. Mm. If you want to quickly check an image, zoom into 100% to check your sharpness before you take the picture, all of those things that you can't do with a DSLR. You, so you it really does make sense. Yeah. Absolutely. And if you're in bright sunlight, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, Having said that, the monitor on this is very good in sunlight, but mm. do you know, you know, you've got the sun in your eyes, it's much easier to look through the, the, yeah. through the viewfinder. Definitely one to do thing stuff I've like noticed. Yeah. yeah. One of the interesting points of releasing that man was elimination of physical shots, sir. Yeah. What's your opinion about this? Was it very paramount for the performance of the camera? I, yeah. I, I think it can only be a good thing at the end of the day. I mean, with this camera, you can shoot, you know, 20 frames a second pretty limitless, limitlessly with the, with the right um, card, mm. or you can shoot 30 frames a second, but you can also shoot 120 frames a second at 11 million pixels. Yeah. And that's something that just could not be achievable with a mechanical shutter. Yeah. So it makes complete sense. And going back to what I said also about the, um, the durability as well, you know, not having a mechanical shutter or a moving mirror in there means there are less things to go wrong. And as I'm sure you're aware, with photographers, you know, over a few years, depending on how much they need uh, their cameras, how much they use their cameras, they need the shutters to be replaced, and That's that will true. never be an issue with this. I was going to say, as a, as kind of head of MPS and seeing all these pro cameras come by, what's the kind of the biggest thing that this camera has solved in terms of a professional viewpoint of like what goes wrong that you think the Z9 yeah. would solve? Many things. I, th I think the, the lack of the need to calibrate your lenses is a big mm. thing. Yeah. So it's a personal thing. Some photographers don't even know that there's calibration issues and it might it's not be true. a problem. Yeah. But for some photographers where, you know, getting that sharpness on the eye is critical, especially if you're shooting wide open, for mm. instance, wedding photographer, portrait photographer, that thing, getting the absolute pinpoint sharpness is, is very crucial for those guys and and with uh you know with mirrors and so on involved it could be an issue you need to calibrate your lenses or or bring them to nikon to get them done um, but with this it just it just isn't necessary so this will hit okay. focus yeah. absolutely nail it you mm -hmm. know even with a 1.2 lens the af will work really well to ensure that the, the eye is always sharp mm. and you won't get any back or front focus whatsoever so i think that's the single biggest thing um, from my perspective that's mm -hmm. an improvement with moving to Z. Excellent. Mm. Let's talk about video functionality. Yes. Z9 is the first camera from Nikon that pretty much beats everything else in the water. What do you see personally? How important is video to Nikon? Um, it's very important. I think, um, you know, it's becoming increasingly important in, in the world we live in. You know, a lot of content now is being delivered in a video format. So people are looking at content on their phones rather than newspapers and even on like moving billboards you see on bus shelters and things like that yeah, now. Yeah, so advertising photographers are getting asked to shoot video. A lot more news photographers are getting asked to shoot video um, for, their, for their online news content as well. So it really is very, very important indeed. Um, and, you know, I think Nikon don't have any sort of camcorder market to protect so we can mm. put all the best features into this mm -hmm. so like I was saying like the 8k video the fact that you can shoot uh, 4k at 120 frames a second to get silky smooth cool. really nice slow motion um, and really nice in, in camera recording now so I think for you know speaking to some of your customers this morning I asked them because I want to pitch it right you know yeah. it's very divisive video because a lot of photographers will be like I don't touch video don't talk to me yeah. about video but for some it's becoming very very important yeah. so the guys I spoke to this morning every single one of those was interested in video 
Interesting. Yeah. So I think it's becoming increasingly important, especially from a, pro a professional perspective as well, yeah. because so many clients want video content. So the fact that we are now market leaders with video, I think is fantastic. It's, it's really, really good. Yeah. Makes really, a nice really well kind of change, yeah. you know. Absolutely. But it's not to say it's not the best um, stills yeah. camera as well. But yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. I'm really glad that it doesn't take away from the performance for stills photography. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, none whatsoever. You know, at the end of the day, there's a little switch there. If you're not interested in video, don't flick it over <laughs> to there. Quite simple. That's yeah. Like, <laughs> having a, such a great price point with all that video functionality bundled in, bundled in because obviously D6 was a great stills camera. The video functionality was not on palette with the top performance. Now you have the best stills camera and the best video camera. It's yeah. thousand pounds cheaper as well. Yeah. Absolutely. What's not to like? It's so competitively priced. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So with Z9 finally released and all this information, you know, technology is here. Are you hoping that this technology eventually will end up in the cheaper and smaller bodies? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, this has got the, the best there is to offer from a technological perspective. And we always see certain features trickle down into the, the, the sort of the mo more prosumer, if you like, mm. or amateur bodies. And I'm sure that will happen. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Well, first, that date is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about lenses. Uh, Nikon released two lenses and announced development of 400 as well. How quickly do you think they'll get them out? Well, it should be fairly soon. Mm -hmm. There's been a huge amount of interest in both the uh, 24 to 120 and, uh, and the 100 to 400, and they're going to be coming shortly behind the Z9. Yes. And again, I think it's going to be a case of, you know, we're just going to struggle to meet the demise because yeah. it's going to be such a popular lens. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to the 200 to 600. Oh, yes. But also the primes. I'm, I'm very keen to see what that 85, that mystery 85 is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Isn't everyone? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I guess, I mean, not that you necessarily know, but are your thoughts that the, line, the lens lineup's only going to get bigger, I imagine. Absolutely. I think uh, Nikon Corporation are you know, really concentrating on getting a, a good range of lenses. Mm. And I think now with the lenses that we've got, which are all fantastic, and you, you mm. know that, you know, the performance is, is stunning on all of them. Um, but with our kind of roadmap going forward, we've got a really good sort of comprehensive mm. system Lovely. that photographers can use. So let's talk a little bit about 400mm 2.8 announcements. Can you share a little bit more information on that? Um, well, I think it's, it's something that is key to a lot of pro photographers and and hobbyists as well, you know, especially for wildlife, mm. um, sports, certain news events as well. So I think it's a really, really welcome addition to our lineup. So Z400 Neo has a built-in teleconverter. Mm. We also see built-in teleconverter with 1.8 to 400 F mount lens as well. Do you think we'll see built-in teleconverters with uh, our not yet announced 600 and 800 Z lenses? I mean, I genuinely don't know the answer to that, so I wouldn't like to speculate, but what I can say is that either way, you'll get a fantastic performance. Mm. I mean, we've seen the technology as well, as you say, with the 180 to 400, where it's almost like it feels to the photographer like you don't have a teleconverter yeah, completely. at all. You know, the quality is the same throughout the zoom range um, from one end to the other, giving you, I think it's over 560 at the top end, mm. um, which is amazing. Um, and I think that would be very welcome on the 400 as well. So uh, time, time will tell. I genuinely <laughs> don't know the answer to that. Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right, final question for you, yeah. Rob. What's your favourite Z lens at the moment? I mean, I think the thing about the Z ranges, they're all phenomenal. Mm -hmm. and, and I tend, even though I work for Nikon Professional Services and I should be advocating the, the, the sort of the bigger F2.8 lenses, yeah. I find the F4 lenses as travel lenses are ideal. So most mm. of what I'm doing these days for myself is just taking pictures of my kids on mm. holiday and out and about and things like that. I really like the um, the 14 to 30 F4 oh, yeah. and the 24 to 70 F4. But if from, from a portraiture perspective, I love this 50mm 1.2. Mm. It's, it's great. It's expensive I mean, taste, but it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's the next best thing to have in the knocked, yeah. but with autofocus, yeah. and you get a really beautiful shallow depth of field. So for portraiture, sure. which is you know one of the things I really like doing, mm. I love it. It's a, it's a great lens. Amazing. If you'd have to choose between 85 1.4 and 85 1.2, which one would you go for? <laughs> if I had to choose between those? Yes. I mean, I guess 1.2 does give you that added advantage. Um, it, it's also difficult to use to get both <laughs> eyes shot when you're shooting at 1.2, yeah. whereas 1.4 covers it off a bit better, so you have to be selective about your, your exposure, but I would have to say 1.2 would give you that option if you need it. Nice to have. The conversation continues on this one. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us, Rob. Uh, it's been pleasure. amazing having you here. Thank you for bringing the Z9 Oh, into no worries us. at all. Great. It's becoming a good friend that we see almost every week. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if only if we only. keep it. And that's a wrap. That's a wrap.